Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. We have discussed a lot of VLSI related topics already and in this video let us learn about some routing concepts. We have seen in previous video that how a routing stack is created. If you see here the blue ones are standard cells, white ones are macros and this is the routing stack that we have already seen that how it is created. So after this is uh, we have also seen from a different angle the 3D view and we also understood the concept and importance of routing in the Schengen technology. This we have already seen and now in this video we have to understand some basic routing concepts. Just for a basic overview we have seen that in the entire VLSI spectrum there are lot of fields and physical design is just one of them and inside PD we do the partitioning first. So partitioning is your first step so this is partitioning. Partitioning is the first step and then we do the floor planning. Floor planning that just this is just a quick review that after floor planning we do the standard cell placement. So this step is itself called as placement step in which we do the only the placement of the standard cells then we do the CTS. Now we are learning about routing. So one part of routing that is your power planning. So power planning we have already seen in one of the videos. So power stripes that come from the top metal layer to the bottom standard cell rail. This is already done in the floor planning stage. Then only we start doing the standard cell placement. Now it is because of your uh, very complex flows and uh, you can say very complex designs and shrinking technology. Because of all that we have merged and there is something called as early clock flow in which we do the some part of CTS in the placement itself. So that is a different story but if you go by the book the standard cell placement then only CTS comes and in CTS we do the clock tree synthesis so you can say that clock routing is done here itself and then comes the routing so this routing is nothing but your signal routing you can call it as signal routing so if you see we have there are three uh, stages where already some part of routing is done so this is one this is two and this is three and this is the most important and concept uh, that that we are going to learn now in the design as we said earlier there are power planning and other stages so what happens is as we have mentioned earlier also there are routing tracks in every layer so if it is a horizontal layer there will be multiple routing tracks which are going the, in the design in the horizontal direction like this similarly for a vertical track also there will be multiple vertical tracks in every layer there will be tracks that are going across the design in every layer so what happens is if we are doing power planning it will take one track maybe one or two spaces track then left and it will be doing like this so what happens is in this we have some two tracks left here and in every layer there will be some tracks left after doing the power planning then then after power planning then comes the then comes the CTS so CTS will also use some of the tracks in every layer not every layer there will be some specific dedicated layer for the clocks so it will use also some tracks so some tracks are used by power planning and after that some tracks are used by CTS and then comes the leftover tracks which will be used by routing. So signal routing will also use rest of the tracks. Now if we talk about routing stages there are different routing stages and let us talk them talk about them one by one. So first is your global routing. Now global routing what happens during placement is the global routing which is used for placing the standard cells. What happens here is tool will identify the routable path. So routable path means wherever the tracks are there or wherever the space is there or scope is there. So in a particular G cell you will have number of tracks going in every layer. So let us say this is one G cell in which you have to take the nets through it. So what it will do is it will identify tool will identify a routable path for the nets in the shortest distance. So let us say that your cell is sitting here and one cell is sitting here and tool has to route it so it will try to identify the shortest path for the nets that are coming in this G cell and then that time it will not consider the DRC so it is not DRC aware it is not DRC aware so we can cross it this is not DRC aware it will simply assign the layer during this kind of 
uh, routing. So while doing the global route, it will simply assign layers to the nets. Maybe like let's say this, this is M2, this is M3, then again M2. So this is the layer assignment that it did for this segment while doing the global routing congestion calculation you can say. So while doing the congestion calculation, we know that it will try to calculate the number of overflows in each layer. And that, that is why you can say that it is congestion aware. So you can say that it is congestion aware because it has the knowledge which layer has how many tracks going for particular net. So it is congestion aware. Then uh, this will also be aware about uh, routing blockages or placement blockages that are going in the design. And you can uh, also say that this shortest distance calculation it will do for a uh, for the net it will take Manhattan distance. So Manhattan distance and there is one more uh, calculation that is called as Cartesian distance. So if there is let us say that this is one point x1 y1 in the design there is another point x2 y2 in the design. Now to go to from here this point x1 y1 to x2 y2 you can have this calculation. So this is x1 y1 to x2 y2 direct calculation. This is called as Cartesian calculation. But tool will while doing the routing of the signal tool will use Manhattan distance. Manhattan distance is not direct distance. It will be like this. So it will take some x1 x2 y2 in the staircase or you can say that it will not be straight forward line. It will be combination of for an uh, uh, for a oblique line, it will be a combination of horizontal and vertical uh, portions. It will not be simply straightforward. So Manhattan distance is that one. Now it will use an algorithm to do the global routing. In general, tool will use Steiner tree or sometimes maze algorithm to calculate the particular net through the net through the design. So these are the algorithms that are used by tool for the global route. The command to do the global routing in the synopsis related tool is route underscore global. So route underscore global is the command which does the global routing. And in addition to all of these points, we should note that there are sometimes pre routes in the design which are sometimes pushed back from the SOC or maybe from the design constraints. You have some pre routes which are there from the right from the floor plan or sometimes from the placement or maybe CTS, whatever it is, before the routing, if you have any routes which are there in the design, so it will do the pre-route aware routing. So re global route is pre-route aware. It it will try to take care of these routes and it will not uh, over oh, it will not overwrite them. And then comes the next part. So next is after global route, you have track assignment. So track assignment means that you will assign the tracks to the net. Now while doing this, so global routed layout is there. Now each net will be assigned a track, specific track and a layer geometry and it will not follow DRC. So it will also be not DRC aware. It is not DRC aware. So you can say that it is also not DRC aware and it will do the timing aware track assignment. So it is aware about the timing and it will do the track, assi track assignment accordingly. Let us say that for one net you have M1, M3 and M5 available in vertical. At that time, you will try, tool will try to take M5 because it is timing aware and it notes and if the net is violating the timing, then it will try to use the M5 more because it has to minimize the timing impact. And this track assignment helps in via minimization. Now the third routing stage is called as detail routing. Detail routing or in some cases it is also called as nano routing. Nano routing. So if this routing it is timing aware routing and it is also DRC aware. So what happens is that you have a final routing of the design. You can call it as final routing of the design and this routing it is 
final routing of the design which is built after the CTS is done and timing is frozen. So filler cells are also added before timing. So you can say that filler cells are also added wherever the empty space is there in the design filler cells are added and then only detailed routing is done. So generally after routing if you open you will see that filler cells are there in the flow and detailed routing is done after analyzing the cause, uh, cause for congestion and everything. So you can say that this is your final stage and it is only the most important stage after which your routing is done and then only we check for the shorts in the design and that is how it is done. So it is completely DRC aware and it is timing aware and it is final routing. That is all for this video. We will come up with more concepts in further videos. Till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and do give your important feedback in the comment section. Thank you.